This program contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Thespian Talk, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and my co-host this week is The Cat. Hello, everyone. And we took a little bit of a break from it last week, but now we've got the new producer spotlight for the site, and this week we have Steve the Wicked. How you doing, Steve? I'm all right. How are you? I am doing just fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. What was it, like two weeks ago? We, we had the trifecta of... of, of of our show, uh, What the Fuck, and uh, Nash's What the Fuck is Wrong with You, all covering the same story from Jackson County, Florida. Oh, Take yeah. a shot yes. every time you talk about Florida. Yes. And, 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 in, and in this case, I even said it outright. I think when uh, Nash had brought it up on What the Fuck is Wrong with You, I said, you need to take two shots because Jackson County is my home county. As it is here with me. Yes. So it's like, yeah, you're, you're like the first person that's been – brought onto the site that's actually relatively close by i think you well you, well, you are closer than uh travis and all of them with the uh, bloody chuckle studios i think they're up in right. georgia somewhere but then you're just like 30 minute drive away it's pretty awesome yeah. <laughs> it's just like right in fact i'm actually kind of surprised we haven't actually met before yeah i know it's like <laughs> ah but yeah i can't believe you guys haven't stopped one another until now i know right <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Now, the funny thing about Florida being in what the fuck and, and all that, when I first started watching What the Fuck is Wrong with You, I used to, in the chat room, I always used to apologize anytime Florida was uh, in the story. I have long since stopped doing that. Yeah, for the longest time, every, t every time it popped up on What the Fuck is Wrong with You or anywhere else where Florida is mentioned in one of our wacky and weird and outright stupid news stories, I always just resign and say, God damn it, Florida. <laughs> Because There's God only so many times you can type, I apologize for my state. Yeah. But God damn it, Florida, good to go <laughs> all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I, even did it when I, I even did it when I was living in Indiana because <laughs> it's like, God damn it, Florida. <laughs> uh. so, uh, so for those, those of us out there, those of us, those of the people out there who don't know who you are, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, Steve, and about what you do and all of that. All right. Well, uh, I'm Steve McCool. I go by Steve the Wicked on the internets, uh, and I'm the host of a little rinky-dink web series called Judge of Character. Uh, basically, it's your sort of average uh, review show, only instead of looking at, say, specific types of movies or TV shows or books, I look at just characters in general, fictional characters from all sorts of genres and mediums, and try to figure out what exactly it was that made them memorable, either for good or for ill. Yeah. So it's, it's basically a character study series. Exactly. Which, I don't think we have enough of those around here. Yeah, it's, I, we don't, actually. When I first started uh, trying to get into the whole review thing, I looked around and I realized there was only maybe three or four other people who did anything remotely similar to what I did. Mm -hmm. And even then, they were, very, they were very different in how they approached it. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I admit, I, I'm having a hard time getting back into doing like online video reviews or whatever <laughs> that's 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 why i've got i've got the uh patreon one that i've got to do and it's just uh although part of it is my my space around here there's not a lot to maneuver with but i might i might try and work on a compromise on that one but but beyond that i mean it's just it's just there there are so many genres and so many things that people have not really covered in the video reviewer format whether it be character studies or I, I've actually been considering throwing around something to to uh, supplement and complement the Port Charlie podcast, which has kind of been on an unofficial hiatus the past couple of months because of scheduling. But um, but you know something that covers soap operas, specifically General Hospital. You know, namely going back to like some of the older plot lines that have happened. Yes, I will be talking about the one that the one where the scientist tries try to freeze the world. Because what? Yes. <laughs> and and everybody thinks wrestling has outlandish storylines and plot lines. <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> well, I've always known soap operas had some really wacky out there storylines. That was never a surprise to me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, in just this one soap opera alone, you got megalomania megalomaniacs who tried to take control of the world by way of freezing it. Uh, you've had aliens. 
Um, in the same universe, there are vampires and angels. It's, it's like their spinoff, Port Charles, was it, it eventually turned into daytime Buffy, <laughs> which I didn't mind. I kind of liked it. It was it was a nice, refreshing change of pace from everything else. Um, I see, and even nowadays, they're just resurrecting all sorts of like older bad guys and, and villains and everything. It's like, oh boy, this this is going this going to be fun. Grab my popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> oh lordy but yeah oh so so okay i've got the uh, webmaster tools over on the google webmaster tools thing and I, of course i put the site into it and one of the things they do is they let you know what search you know what search topics pop up you know when people try to search for whatever you know um i i probably worded that poorly but you type in something one of the results is my site uh, rtgomer.com mm-hmm. and um I've got the top ten right here because there's there's a good long list, but uh, the number one is poets of the fall jealous gods. Okay, I'm, I'm assuming that's a song and artist thing. Um, number two is sex trek. Thank you, Mr. Mindo. <laughs> <laughs> number three is Jillian Zarowski. Because okay. yeah, because uh, before Cat took over on What the Fuck, she was on there and she was the main co-host. And and while we are behind uh, on on having the stuff on the site, I've got an admin who's supposed to be doing that, but she's been kind of falling behind. But uh, you know, Jillian's been on the site. She's been on That's Being Talk a couple of times too. So she's a lot of fun. Uh, number four is Sex Plus. Thank you, Lacey. <laughs> <laughs> Number five is Constructive Deconstruction, one of my other shows. Yes! I'm in the top, one of my shows is in the top five here. <laughs> <laughs> now, number six, this one this one I, I think is weird. Mara Wilson Sex Tape. Oh, my. Uh, what? Number one, I mean, we've mentioned Mara on, this, on, on the shows before. We've mentioned sex tapes on the show before, probably. But never the two together, and we certainly don't have sex tapes on the site. That's not our deal. Although I would love it if Mara Wilson would come on the show. Mara Wilson, if you're listening, right into the show. <laughs> uh, uh, number seven is Charlie Triple X. <laughs> number eight is Vagina Hacks. Oh, dear. <laughs> Again, that leads back to uh, Lacey Green. Wait, wait a minute, because when I hear vagina hacks, I think of, like, life hacks. So all I can imagine is people coming up with crazy things to do with their vaginas. <laughs> How to make your vagina easier to use. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, Here, a list of things you can store in your vagina. No! No! No, 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 no. No. Oh, although I'm is, sorry. Although it is better than one of the examples from the mo- one of the more recent what the fucks that that cat had brought up, it's people giving used tampons to Goodwill. That Stop. happened. It happened. It happened to someone I know. Oh God! What the fuck is wrong with people? Um, if you excuse me, I'm gonna go throw up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just oh man. Ugh. You just look at that and you go, "Why would you do that?" I mean, I mean, the only possible good sol- okay. no good for, for no. Uh, no 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 don't no. even try and finish that sentence because there is no way to end it. Well, no, yeah, there's there's no no. Good is not necessarily the word I was wanting. My brain jumped ahead of me, but the only the only possible plausible explanation for it, ex- outside of you know people just being douchebags, would be uh, <laughs> would be just it got thrown in with a bunch of stuff and somehow that got in there yes it's still very disgusting but uh but you know that that's one of those things and it's just ew i mean although it would be great for the vampire demographic but I mean, no no i don't even think talking. then just yeah. stop talking <laughs> just okay. no Ugh. okay okay so number nine is lesbian talk hi hagen I, I'm sure she she uh, creamed herself when she watched this week's Doctor Who. <laughs> uh, if only I had cable. Mm. I, I just I, ha- I I have to wait until it like comes out on Netflix before I can see it. Yeah, I personally stream it through one of these sites that streams the BBC Live. Ah, so uh, I'll have to look into that. Yeah, and 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 please tell me, Cat, you watched it. I I 
I go to my parents' house and watch it with my dad. Ah, okay. But yeah, so if you haven't seen it this week, there's there's one part in the episode that I swear when it when it played, I could hear Hagen squeeing and 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 all of that all the way over from Northern Ireland. <laughs> now there's an image I just can't process. Hagen squeeing. Oh. <laughs> I mean, um, I, that's not anything bad about it. It's just like, I, yeah, that's not something I picture. Yeah. Oh, well, it happens. I mean, I'm sure there was a lot of squee when she got married. Had to have been. Yeah, true. Mutual squee. No, squee is like a fangirl, fanboy kind of yee, less profound than marriage, say, for yeah. example. Uh, yeah, I know I was doing a lot of internal squeeing when I was at Dragon Con. Oh, oh yeah. How was that? Oh my god, it was awesome. <laughs> Especially considering it was the first convention I've ever been to in my life. Oh. Oof. First. Yeah, convention. so I like I, I made like all the classic beginner mistakes. I tried to go to as many things as possible. I, I walked it. It was just oh man. Yeah. I took as many pictures as I possibly could, but I don't even think I got a fraction of all the different cosplays that were there. It was just amazing. Yeah. Um my, well, Dragon Con is really big for your first con. That's kind of a huge convention to start with. Yeah, that's well, like, I figured if I'm going to start, I might as well go big. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, you, you've got all these the, the bigger conventions. It's like uh, I know when Two was talking more about um, you know like furry conventions on his show Two Cents, and somebody was like, okay, what's a good idea to go to first con? Is Anthrocon, which is the biggest furry convention in the United States, is that a good idea? And Two's like, no. Go somewhere smaller first, <laughs> and 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 that's generally a good idea. My first my first con experience was Magfest back in 2012, and and it was pretty great. It's it's not too big, it's not too small. A lot of people milling around, you know. I we didn't try and see everything. We saw what we wanted to see. And we hung out with people we wanted to hang out with. Got plenty yeah. of video, and it was it was a lot of fun. Uh, and then I, yeah. and then I ended up doing New York Comic Con. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I cannot complain too much because I was able to go – I got autographs from Tom Savini, yeah. uh, from Dana Snyder of Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Nice. Uh, I got an autograph from Allison Scagliotti of Warehouse 13, um, and I got an autograph from Jenny Breeden. Nice. So I, I got I got all the autographs I wanted to get. Awesome. <laughs> and and I, I came back almost broke from buying too much loot. <laughs> yeah, I, I I had a similar experience this past Mad Fe- Magfest. Although mine wasn't spent so much on loot as it was on food. <laughs> yeah, that that did it too. But I mean, I I was just walking through the dealer room like, oh my god, I want this, I want this, I want this, I want all of this. Yeah, it's it's like that first day this past Magfest. Uh, Becky and I were walking through the dealer's room, and, and I'm sitting there like, okay, can I justify this? Can I justify that? Can I do this? Can I do that? I ended up justifying a couple of Pikmin plushies because uh, my mom loves Pikmin. And so I was like, you know what? She would love these. So I went and I bought them, and, and she loves them. <laughs> yeah, um, there there was no justification for some of the things I bought. I bought like a, a steampunk revolver. Ooh. Um, oh, it was very nice. And I bought this uh, – I, I don't recall the size of it. It's a little figurine of the Joker from The Killing Joke. Yeah. Absolutely no justification for that at all, but other than I wanted it. Yeah. Well, there was, there was one other thing I ended up justifying was a uh, raffle that I entered in. Uh and I got a painting from a square painter as a prize. It's it's uh, it's it's basically a paint up of the ending of Mega Man Three with with all the sprite, you know, details and everything, and it looks amazing. Problem is, I was mega bussing home. <laughs> <laughs> it's in, it's interesting to carry that around on a mega bus and then overnight in Atlanta. And yeah. bear in mind, this is the this is early January. Oh yeah. Glad it made it home in one piece, though. Yeah. Yeah. Magfest is the next con I want to go to. I'm not going to be able to go to the next one that's coming up because yeah. it's too close, but I'm planning on going to the next one after that, which means I'll have to skip Dragon Con next year so I can save up the money, but yeah, I think it'll be worth it. Yeah. Oh, it is. Definitely is. <laughs> I'm <laughs> still working on trying to get there for this next one, but uh, we'll, we'll have to see what happens. Uh, oh, and back to the list. Now that we've taken this like long ass tangent, <laughs> <laughs> that's just a detour. Oh yeah, uh, a shortcut. Lot... Yes, so mushrooms. <laughs> there you go. And last one here, number ten, Mara Wilson, lesbian. 
Oh, what? I, I don't... What is it? Because she, she appeared in... in I, I don't know. I have a feeling it has to do with Lindsay somehow. I don't know. It, who... And the fanfic goes. Yeah, there it goes, you know? Although I, you probably would see more fan fiction if you if you watch just the the nostalgia chicks Matilda review, you would probably see more fan fiction between Nella and 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 uh, Mara Wilson. But <clears throat> yeah, true. <laughs> uh but yeah, it, it's interesting when you look up your own uh, search search terms or whatever. I just some of them just I, I don't know. I don't even know. Oh. So anyway, I'm afraid. We, hmm? I'm, I'm I'm afraid to find out what people might be searching for in conjunction with me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, yeah. So with that, we'll go ahead and hit our shout outs for this week because uh, yeah, that burned up about 15 minutes. <laughs> 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 Wee! Uh, but my big shout out this week is Big Cat Rescue over on YouTube. Uh, you can just search them up. I'll put the link below when I post this up on the sites and everywhere else. Uh, you go, and it's basically a bunch of people that, that have like a big cat, but big cats uh, in in captivity. They've rescued them from the wild or or, or from something else or what, whatever. And they have videos where they, you know, they study them and they play with them. Like they have big cats having to, you know, playing with like cardboard boxes or a big pool or what have you. And just goes to show, big cats can be just as fun as a, and adorable as little ones. Especially when given, like, bags full of catnip. Yes! It's, it's the greatest <laughs> thing ever. It is. Oh, my God. It was great. <laughs> oh, so that is mine. Cat, do you happen to have one? Hell no. This is me we're talking about. Oh, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, take a shot. And, and I know and I know you're a bit on the spot here, Steve, but do you have anything you want to shout out or? or... Uh... No, no, I can't say I do. At least not at the moment. Okay. I'll probably think of one later, and then it's just like the middle of the the thing. It's like, oh, I got a shout out now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that happens. That <laughs> does happen. Okay, so with that, let's go ahead and hit our news. Oh boy. This, I don't know what to make of a lot of this. I, I've I try to balance it out with some funny, with some stuff that makes you want to punch a baby, but you know, I I try. I don't know how well I did. Oh, uh, Republican senator. Oh yeah, this is this is this starts well when it's set, when it starts with Republican senator, of course. Republican <laughs> senator Ted Cruz. Oh, there's another way to start it up. Is so desperate to stop Democrats from repealing Citizens United that he told his most outrageous lie yet on the Senate floor. On Monday, the U.S. Senate voted 79 to 18 to start debate on Senate Joint Resolution 19, which would restore power, the power of Congress to regulate money in elections. In an attempt to smear Democrats and the resolution, Cruz claimed that the effort to regulate campaign finance would outlaw satire in America. Ugh. What? what? <laughs> um, according to Cruz, because NBC is a corporation that makes money on a show that does political satire – Lawmakers would be able to control it. Saturday Night Live over the years, quote, quote from him, has had some of the most tremendous political satire, Cruz said. Who can forget in 2008 Saturday Night Live's wickedly funny characteriza characterization of the vice Republican vice presidential nominee Sarah Palin? It was wickedly funny and also had a profoundly powerful effect on people's assessment of government Palin, who's a friend of mine. Congress would have the power to make it a criminal offense. Lauren Michaels could be put in jail under this amendment for making fun of any politician. That is extraordinary, it is breathtaking, and it is dangerous. Cite your fucking source, Senator Cruz. Yeesh. And, and this article even has, you know, three sections of what the resolution actually says. Section 1. To advance democratic self-government and political equality and to protect the integrity of government and the electoral process, Congress and the states may regulate and set reasonable limits on the raising and spending of money by candidates and others to influence elections. Nothing Section, about SNL. Yeah. Or, or satire in general. Yeah. Section 2. Congress and the states shall have power to implement and enforce this article by appropriate legislation and may distinguish between natural persons and corporations or other artificial entities created by law, including by prohibiting such entities from spending money to influence elections. So it, it, it just seems like they're, they're 
seems like they want to keep the corporations, even though even though they legally got corporations declared as people when they're not. They they're they're trying to turn that and say, yeah, corporations may legally be, legally be defined as people, but they're not natural people. So fuck you. That that's my interpretation of it. I may be mm. wrong. I'm I'm not a you know I'm I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> uh, section three. Nothing in this article shall be construed to grant Congress or the states the power to abridge the freedom of the press. Nothing in there says that satire would be made illegal. There is nothing in there that says that you can't say anything against a politician, whether it be true or not. I mean, if you're outright trying to spread something that is not true as factual information, that's a whole different story. But if you if I want to say, well, Senator Ted Cruz is a big poopy face and he needs to go and hide his head in shame, then, you know, there's no law against that. There will never be a law against that, at least as long as we're alive. Yeah. You know, and because that would infringe, you know, oh, oh, what is that other? Oh, yeah. The First Amendment freedom of speech. Oh, yeah, that old thing. Yeah. Government can't do that. So, you know, that that's not going to happen. That's the same law that allowed Saturday Night Live to make fun of Sarah Palin and thus the rest of the country to make fun of Sarah Palin and still keep making fun of Sarah Palin. I mean, we would have made to... fun of her one way or the other. It was just yeah, a matter true. of painting a better, easier target. Yeah. And it's also what allows me to say the following. Todd, Ted Cruz is an idiot. Exactly. You know, we, you know, hey. There's no law against that. You can't come and have us arrested. He can come and cry, and he can and he can try and say, "Well, I'm not an idiot." And then we, just, yeah, we can just fire back and say, "Well, prove it. Prove it." <laughs> <laughs> That's all I gotta say, you know, because uh, right now you're proving you're kind of idiotic there, uh, uh, Senator Cruz. Just kind just, of just need a bit there, a wee little bit. Yeah, That's just a wee little bit. A wee little bit of of, of idioticness there. And my accent is horrible. <laughs> Speaking of horrible, Fox News. Oh, another another uh, good you, article. You pick these things. You do this to yourself. I know. Although I also do this to the to, to everybody on the show at the same time. So That's I'm not safe. suffering alone. You will <laughs> suffer with causing me. Causing everyone to suffer. Yes, you will suffer with me, goddammit. Fox News host Tucker Carlson used the Sunday edition of Fox and Friends to launch a bizarre rant against America's teachers and the U.S. education system. Carlson's sidekick in this festival of ignorance is none other than former teacher with the Koch Brothers-funded Bill of Rights Institute, Whitney Goddamn Your Mill Tank Neal. Neal also happens to be director of federal and state campaigns at Freedom Work, a Tea Party-inspired campaign organization. Oh, good. This group has been lobbying for, among other things, creationism and intelligent design to be taught in school science lessons as equally legitimate scientific theories on the origins of life on Earth. It's not science! Okay, sorry. I had to get that out. Uh, you, you beat me to it. <laughs> I, yeah. I like uh, this. My neighbors are probably like, what the fuck just happened over there? <laughs> Uh, the Fruitcake Fest began with a quintessential logic leap from Carlson, arguing that American teachers were giving children less homework in efforts to do less work themselves, while also conniving to keep the cur- curriculum hidden from parents. What? What? Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, wait. just... just what, what would be the point of that? You know, and it's, it's just... And, and they had a video in with this, and a lot of the quotes that are in this article are, are from the video itself. And <laughs> it, it, it just, just really, teachers trying to get out of work for the same pay. No. If they're not assigning homework, there's got to be a different reason. Perhaps, uh, like, homework doesn't actually help teach anything. There's, like, a lot of studies out there that basically say homework isn't really helping anybody's education i know it didn't help me i mean when i was still in school because i i dropped that in fifth grade and and was homeschooled the rest of the time but when i was still in public school i would always have the homework finished before i even left the damn place so it really didn't help anybody yeah not me yeah i got i got into that kind of thing myself usually it's just you know and if i didn't finish it you know sad for me i sometimes eh, you didn't do it at home either but mm. Mm. And it was particularly bad about it with math. 
Yeah, yeah. let's not go there. <laughs> the math yeah. was an experiment in how much of my homework can I get my dad to help me with. There you go. <laughs> At which point he would look at it and go, when did they start putting letters with it? I know, right? <laughs> no, my, my, my dad actually like taught some amount of math uh, in the military, and he'd be like, look, make your brother do this. I don't feel like it. <laughs> and then I would have to do my brother, like grade my brother's English papers, and that was very offensive to my older brother. Oh! <laughs> don't feel sorry for him. He's an asshole. <laughs> well, and then... not that good at writing English papers. <laughs> yeah there there is there is a problem with that oh lordy unsurprisingly agreed wholeheartedly with carlson's crazy speak um whitney neal actually the the article the point i jumped in there forgot to mention that whitney neal is the one who wholeheartedly agreed uh, it's it's yeah yeah did you we, we need eight more english people ah uh i've i've actually notice the the amount of editing that some of these articles do not go through lately it's sad um, but anyway she was she agreed saying that it's a great suspicion as much as we don't want to look at teachers that way as wanting to eliminate the amount of work they have to do i almost think this is more of a ploy to keep parents out of the classroom to limit the involvement parents have on what's going on with teachers because if kids aren't bringing home homework the parents don't really know what's going on most of the oh. parents still don't know what's going on. Yeah, and it has nothing to do with homework. You know, my parents <laughs> – I mean maybe – okay, maybe it's not – my my example wouldn't be too great because I live in small podunk town. But, you know, my parents, sometimes they knew, sometimes they didn't know what was going on. And if they knew, it's because, well, everybody in this town gossips like fucking hens. Yep. Uh, but, yeah. At this point, Carlson got a little excited, launching attacks on Common Core and standardized testing, before po positing the rhetorical question. Also, do you think it's a problem with American schools? Is kids are just working too hard? They're just doing too much work? They're learning just, they're just learning too much? Is that a major problem? Wait, how can they be learning too much when they're not doing homework? If if their teachers are too lazy to teach them and give them homework, how is it that they're learning too much? Uh, oh, oh my God. To, Can't let that Pick happen. one message and stick to it, but yes. don't cons have stupid conspiracy theories that are refuting the other half of your conspiracy theory. There, he, he does have one message, and that message is, I'm crazy. Yes, <laughs> there you go. And he is crazy. So there are a lot of people that... that, that do the news and, and the op-ed shows on Fox News. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Well, the ones that, that that get in the news seem to be, that's for sure. And the pair is implying that, at least according to this article, the pair implied that this was, in fact, the case. And, uh, yeah, I could, I could see why they might think learning too much would be a bad thing, because if you learn too much, then you might have a brain, and people with brains don't take everything Fox News says at face fucking value. Exactly. And they don't need that. They need the viewers. They need the stupid sheep to have the stupid viewers, and they need the stupid sheep for the viewers so they can actually score, you know, help help gain votes for the Republican Party. See, I could do conspiracy theories too. <laughs> Thing is, I'm probably right. <laughs> that's that's yeah, the problem. It's, it's not a conspiracy theory if it's true. This is yeah, when when they actively go out and tell people, you know, kids don't have to go to school and they don't have to go to universities and and that there is a war uh, against people who aren't getting educated. Then, yeah, it's not really a conspiracy theory when they're like kids are learning too much. Yeah, mm. they, they simply don't want people to be educated because of some made up idea that there is persecution against the uneducated when there isn't persecution against the uneducated, the uneducated need education yes everybody needs it that's why that's why we need the internet to keep as open and wide and free as it is you exactly know. you know because what because what was it just this past week there was the whole new the the another attempt at the whole internet fast lane thing uh, and it's like yeah they put everybody in the slow lane and so the very poor don't get the fast access to the internet and not only is would it be harmful for th for places like my site, Nerdvice, that guy with the glasses. Well, possibly that guy with the glasses. You know, that would 
that would probably have a little bit of extra trouble struggling to keep up or what have you. But you also have the internet slow lanes for people who may not be patient enough to sit through dial-up speed connections if they want to learn something about a particular subject. They'll just say, fuck it, and go watch Fox News. Oh, yeah. Because, I mean, when I do my show, I do all my research through the internet. Mm -hmm. So to have any of those sites be slowed down, it's like, that would be a hamper on my own work there, kind of, sort of. But, I mean... Ah, it's just stupid people. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so we're, we're uh, take a shot. Just take your shots now, folks. Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Oh, this one. <laughs> yeah. Wait, can, can I read the first little bit, bit real quick? Go for it. Okay, Fort Lauderdale is asking pedestrians to try a new way to safely cross Los Olas Boulevard. Step into the crosswalk. Make eye contact with the oncoming driver, and then wave a neon orange flag, helpfully provided by the city. And then kiss your ass goodbye, because he's not stopping. <laughs> yeah, this is like, <laughs> what the fuck? I mean, even even if you go downtown, I mean, Fort Lauderdale, I don't know, it's not exactly a small city. Uh, you know, it's probably about the size of Indianapolis. And, you know, I've lived in Indianapolis, walked downtown Indianapolis quite a bit. If you tried that in Indianapolis, your ass would probably get hit. You would be a smear on the road. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you would. It may not. You may not be going as fast as like 40 or 50 miles an hour downtown, but you get hit with a car going 25. That's still going to hurt. You're going to have a bad day. Yeah. It's just why would you do that? And who says the driver is going to be paying attention to you at that particular moment? Yeah, a good driver is going to be attentive. And notice when somebody's trying to cross into a crosswalk, they fucking stop. Not everybody's going to do that. And, and I'd also like to point out this is Florida, so somebody would see those flags and go, ooh, Target. Yeah. Although this is South Florida. we don't. Have, I don't think they have too many of those in South Florida, though. I don't know. Uh, crazy in Florida is pretty bad everywhere. This is true. But up, but up here we have the hunter crazy we, and and the meth lab crazy like those yeah. fuckers the other week. Uh, but down there they have well okay meth crazy is all over the state. What am I saying? <laughs> I I live not in Florida but I live in the meth capital of the country. So tell me about it. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> yeah, Lake County. You think you got it bad? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh. So, uh, and the article mentions that similar flags have been used in cities like St. Paul and Berkeley, California, with one of the largest being introduced in Seattle in 2008. The Seattle program featured many more flags than Fort Lauderdale's program, and they were placed at 17 locations. So this is not just Florida that has uh... tried this. They've, they tried this in St. Paul. Lewis! Please tell me they're still not doing this. Well, I mean, look what it says what happened in Seattle afterwards. Yeah. After three years, the Seattle Department of Transportation dropped the program, claiming that people kept stealing the flags, that they didn't notice a marked impact from the program. After ending the program, they allowed residents and community organizations to create their own programs and provided a set of guidelines for users to follow. So right now in Seattle, there is a large number of people running around with neon orange flags that, for no reason. Apparently. <laughs> this neon orange flags, why not? Get one, put it up in your room. You're like, like you, when you steal a street sign or something, you get it, you put it up in your room or whatever. You know, just because whatever. Maybe it has your name on it. Yay, whatever. Yeah. Uh, there, there is – I am never going to have that kind of a street sign in my room because there is no – city in this country that has like gomer avenue or gomer street you're not going to see that you know I'd, I'd have to have one custom made oh it's just and and what is it where, where, where was that uh the the set of guidelines yeah look both ways before you cross the goddamn street there's your guidelines yeah you know it, and if you're in a car pay the fuck attention all right i i know that 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 you might want to tech you know sex your girlfriend or boyfriend at that particular moment in time instead of you know waiting to get to wherever the hell you're going, but you know look up from that, pay the fuck attention, or do what I do, know what you're going to say, and learn how to type without looking at your goddamn phone. Yeah, there you go. Problem solved. Ever be, even better yet, just don't fucking do it at all. That's even better. 
even better there. <laughs> uh, but if you must, do it without looking. Keep your eye on the road. Always. Eyes on the road. Yes. Well, road, and then check your mirrors every now and then. Yeah, because that's the other thing. It says make eye contact with the oncoming driver. Well, what if they're not looking? Yeah, they could be looking at the mirror or, or you know, it's that split second. Oh, oh. This is this is why downtown areas, they have stoplights for yeah. this purpose. Duh. It is just, uh <laughs> it's it's just it's just crazy. I love I love the the one somebody was quoted as saying the cars seem to have a lack of respect for the crosswalk. Gee, I wonder why. Yeah, because idiots just hop out in front of them, you know. Yeah, those cars they're such assholes. They're like in the cafeteria knocking over the crosswalk's lunch tray and <laughs> stepping on his back of his shoes and other asshole things. Looking no respect. Stops. Looking at the stop sign going, nerd! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Cars are Cars assholes. Cars are assholes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So we're going to go one state. Well, for most of the state, it's one state north. For uh, for us, it's one state, one county to the, to the east. Uh, to Georgia. Lovely. Nobody likes a stinky beaver. Boo on that line. Yes. And by the way, that is not my writing. That is the article. And it gets worse. Just ask the people of Cumming, Georgia. Such an, such an unfortunate name. It's like, hey, honey, we just got married. Where do you want to go? I want to go to Cumming. There you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, Becky, if we ever get married, we're going to Cumming, Georgia. <laughs> no, no, no. No, we're not. Uh, I wonder what their tourist uh, um, agency would be like down there. I don't know, but uh, you know, I don't <laughs> come to beautiful, come in Georgia, and have a good time. Oh my! <laughs> Get George Decay to be their spokesperson <laughs> <laughs> for an orgasmic good time. You should be coming. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, oh. God. So. Uh, so anyway, the people of Cumming, Georgia, who had to endure the filthy stench of rotting beaver carcasses after one resident allegedly left them in a parking lot. Police are fingering Chad Arthamon. Oh. Damn it. They chose that wording on purpose. But Nobody likes a pun. Yeah. but they're... Everyone loves a pun. Yes. The they're more terrible, pun. the better. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that that's 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 the kind of date night Becky and I have. We just we just you know see who can make the worst puns. I know when I've made a particularly bad one. Oh, but uh, Chad Art Artemovich is the lead suspect in the case. Artemovich was arrested August 23rd after customers of a Title Max complained about decomposing beaver carcasses in the parking lot. Responding officers found several large bags full of maggots, fluid, and rotting beaver, which gave off, gave off an atrocious smell, they said. One officer said he could smell the rot in his patrol cruiser for hours after he left the scene. What the fuck did you do? Put them in the cruiser for a few minutes? <laughs> God. I mean, Jesus. It's like, yeah, I'd like to get a new car freshener. Well, we got uh, Pine Fresh, we got Mountain Stream, and then we got Rotting Beaver. Yeah, I'll take Rotting Beaver. There you go. I, I love that maggoty fresh smell. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. Well, uh, Artemovich eventually copped to the crime after an employee saw him arrive in a truck and drop the car corpses off. And he said his family had been harassed by Title Max over $4,000 in lending debt. I admit that I'd done that, he said. Title Max was harassing my parents and anybody that was just that was on that contract. They were calling me three or four times a day. I was dealing with divorce, PTSD from serving in two wars, and it just built up. I just went there. <laughs> I just went there. <laughs> yes. After several calls from the police, Artemovich agreed to turn himself in, and he was charged with illegal dumping. And the, the local TV station has more. Uh, Artemovich told the arresting officers he was in the U.S. Marines for 16 years where he specialized in reconnaissance. He also said he was on medication for PTSD, and after being booked, he was transported to the Forsyth County Sheriff's Office where he was turned over to detention officers. So the, the thing is, I, I got I to gotta, I gotta like this guy. 
because he was just sick and tired of this bullshit. Something needed to be done. And he did it in, while still very, very gruesome and gross, he did it in one of the more nonviolent ways possible. And I True. love I it. mean, he, he, you know, suffered from PTSD. He could have gone in and shot the place up. Yeah. But no, he just dumped a bunch of dead, nasty beavers. He, he did the passive-aggressive way. The, yes. I'm just well, going to make a mess and make you clean it up. Well, I ain't got no $4,000, but I got some beaver. Can I give that to you? Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, and, and, and he admits it. He, he fully admits He's like, yeah, I did it. And I'll tell you why I did it. Here you go. <laughs> I'd do it again. Yeah. If only I could find more beavers. There you go. <laughs> uh, now, the only thing left is to find the person who wrote the article and smack them for the bad puns. <laughs> nobody likes a stinky beaver. Well, nobody likes you. <laughs> there you go. I don't know. I don't know. If, if my beaver does, if, you know, if my beaver doesn't smell, I start worrying, you know, because <laughs> if it's totally devoid of smell, there's issues. Oh, Gomer, is there something you're not telling us? No. Okay. <laughs> Are you sure? I'm pretty sure. <laughs> we're we're more than willing to hear you out about your beaver. Uh, yeah, we're very open people here. We're very well, forward we thinking. Yes. <laughs> we are, but nah. nah. Okay. So, um, a Virginia teen who opened her own business says she's been targeted by a conservative group in her footloose town. Yeah, you can see why I put this in here. <clears throat> Tiana Ramos, a 16-year-old high school senior, owns and operates Not Girls. I think it's supposed to be Naughty. They left a thing off there. Donut shop at a shopping mall in her hometown, Front Royal. She works at the 1950s pinup themed bakery before and after school, along with other teens, teens dressed in rockabilly-style clothing. But the store's name and its framed artwork featuring photos of Marilyn Monroe and Betty Page have drawn the ire of a strong conservative alliance group in the town, accusing Ramos and her business of promoting promiscuous behavior. Oh, Ooh, well, this? we wouldn't want any kind of sexual freedom or freedom mm. of your own body at all. Why would why would anybody want that? Sexual freedom, I declare. Oh, well, well, where's this uh, shop at, Virginia? Hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Within a week of opening, the teen's mother said someone drove past and threw garbage at the door. They literally threw trash at the door and said, Naughty girls burn in hell, said Natalie Ramos. I started bawling right there. She decided to not, not to report the incident to, to police, but she said the harassment continued online, including the crowdsourced review site Yelp. Yelp? What did you do? They were talking about how the girls look like hussies, Natalie Ramos said. They didn't talk about the food or the service. The site removed these posts at her request. Good on, good on you, Yelp. But she soon noticed more negative comments about her daughter's bakery on Twitter and Facebook. And as we all know, Twitter and Facebook would totally take any potential, you know, any acts of misogyny and, 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 and just bullshittery seriously, won't they? Oh, yeah, they're real good about that. I've got to hold it in because I need to save that for a different show. <clears throat> they were saying that the shop represents sluts and anyone who works there is promiscuous, Natalie Ramos said. It was a lot of negativity that didn't need to be there. Oh, God help it. Promis uh, promiscuity is such a bad thing. Oh, no. My teenage daughter might be sexually active. This <gasps> my neighbor's daughter might be sexually active. We can't. They have might that. be sexually active with one another. <gasps> oh my Penises god. and vaginas. Oh my god. <laughs> it's not like that this has been something going on since time immemorial. I mean, hell. Hey, you know what you know what I'm willing to bet? That a lot of these conservative people that are in such outrage over this bullshit were probably just as promiscuous when they were teenagers and don't want to fucking admit it. Oh, yeah. And and they're probably not getting any now, so why should anybody get to have any fun if they're not having any? Yeah. Guess yeah. what? Guess what? My – my and, – and again, yeah, I'm going personal. I'm, I'm probably oversharing again. But you know what? I don't get any for months at a time. You do not see me telling anybody that, you know, yeah, you shouldn't have sex because I'm not having any or, or f trying to find whatever reasons. And I'm pretty sure there are other people like me out there who has gone months, even years without sex. And they're not trying to push their, their own celibacy on other people. 
you know, be like one of those people that 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 just say, okay, I'm not getting any, but if you are, yeah, hooray for you. You're my hero. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Have fun. Oh. So yeah, Natalie Ramos had said a friend of the. Mo- and mother of a Naughty Girls employee, told her that they had been asked to boycott the teen's bakery because its logo feature, uh, featured a stylized devil's tail. That's just a, that, that just seems like more, more fuel on the fire for this thing. It's like, oh no, they, they have Marilyn Monroe and Betty Page and they're, they're dressed rockabilly. They're, they're, they're whores. They're, they're, they're prop- they worship <laughs> Satan. Yes. It's just, what? really? There's the slightest mention of the devil. They worship Satan. It's like, wow. And of course, they're also they're, they're, the opponents are also circulating in emails accusing Tiana Ramos of trying to exclusively attract male customers, right? Because you know it's it's not like Hooters where you 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 say you go there for the food, but you know you really look at the big titties. But you know here these are teenagers. You're not going to go there and just to get you know just to get the hormones flowing. And if you do, something's seriously wrong with you. Well, that that's going to be the next argument is that uh, that that these young girls are dressed up and it's going to lure men. Maybe that's what they're really worried about. They're worried about these teenagers luring their husbands away, um, and, and that men are going to be uh, um, sexually aroused by these teenage girls, and that obviously it's because it's their fault and and not the man's fault. And this is where they're going. Yeah, because it's never the man's fault, is it? Oh no. This has got to be where they're going to go with it. They're going to they're going to try and shut this place down because it's a there's going to be some pro, potential indecency with luring uh, grown men to young women and it's going to be terrible. Yeah. And and let me let me let me let me tell you I'm I'm going to assume that these are the older women that that are that are afraid that they're going to lose their husbands to these younger women. If you had a little bit more faith that your husband loves you enough to stay with you, even if the sexual spark mm-hmm. is dim and possibly gone from your marriage, then you need help. Both of you go to a counselor, sit down and talk shit out. And more importantly, if he gets pulled away, why would you want to keep his ass in the first place? Exactly. I mean, uh, and I'm, yeah, I'm like, oh, you. Go- I'm even going to go a little further out on this limb and assume that all these women are monogamous. Mm. So, you know, and, I mean, if you're not monogamous and this is still an issue with you, then what the fuck? <laughs> uh. Uh. Oh, God damn it. Yeah. Um, I'm going to going to go to this next one, which is, oh, I love this one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> calm, calm down, sir. Calm down. Oh, so, you're frightening me. So you you both have heard about the fappening. No, oh, Jesus. You know where where the 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 hackers went in and they got the nude photos of of like I think it was Jennifer Lawrence and a few other women celebrities. Yeah, Jennifer that are... Lawrence, Mary Elizabeth Winstead. Those are the only two I can remember. There's a whole bunch of them though. Yeah, they they all got traced back to this one guy. There was a sense of irony when the strongly anti-NSA, pro-privacy users of the social network Reddit began gloating over the privacy-destroying leak of celebrity nude photos. Privacy, it seemed, only applied to Reddit users. For celebrities, no such luck. But now there's a starker example of the double standard. The Reddit user responsible for bringing the hacked photos into the public eye has decried an invasion of his privacy by the media. How does that feel? How does it feel? <laughs> the, 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 they're invading my privacy. I, I, I have no privacy. Well, you shouldn't. That feeling in the deep pit of your stomach that you're feeling there, buddy, that's called justice. Yeah. Sweet, sweet, delicious justice. Yeah. Reddit user Johns McJohn started The Fappening, a now-closed forum that became the go-to repository for viewing photos leaked from celebrities' phones. Although it doesn't appear he took part directly in the hack, he did perhaps do more than any single person to make the photos widely available. As, and as part of an Ask Me Anything Q&A on Reddit, he complained that a Washington Post story profiling, but not directly naming him, contained unnecessary personal information. 
Why is my being on an asexuality website or an Asperger's board relevant to my work on Are the Fappening, he wrote. I decided Thursday that I wouldn't delete my account, and if the press wants to send me through the ringer, so be it. I won't be bullied into silence. You're getting what's coming to you, you motherfucker. You took these photos that were leaked and, and, and stolen from these celebrities' phones, and you put them out there for everybody to see. Every, you know, you put them out there for all of these vultures, and now the spotlight's on you for your part in it. And you, you, why is all of this relevant? Well, guess what? This is what these celebrities go through all the goddamn time. What I'm trying to wrap my brain around is the fact that the idiot actually didn't ask me anything. Yeah. Hmm. It's like, you're not familiar with the concept of anonymity, are you? Yeah. It's just... It, it, it just, uh, uh. And he is an active user of Reddit's cocaine forum, who the post noted had difficulty paying bills. Also had this to, he also had, and the guy uh, John McJohn had this to say: "I don't like it, but so be it. The Nixon administration couldn't stop the WP, so I didn't try to stop them. Also, I paid my gas kill bill in case anyone cares. We don't. We don't care." All we, I... we we actually don't care anything about this guy at all or anything about his personal life that he's so worried about people knowing about. The only thing that we care about is that he, he's getting exactly what he deserves. Yeah. Like, seriously, that's all we care. Yeah, you... I don't, I don't know. I was interested to find out he paid his gas bill. That's important <laughs> shit right there. Well, yeah. No, no, I don't. I, I don't care at all. Yeah. Oh, Lordy. So, one last story. And um, I'm, I'm having a little trouble deciding. Da, 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 da. You know what? I'm just gonna go with this one right under this story, because this is gonna be this is just gonna be great. Washington megachurch Mars Hill announced that it is closing several branches and has dismissed a pastor after he recently called for the resignation of founder Mark Driscoll, who had created controversy with his anti-LGBT and anti-woman views. In a letter posted to his Dropbox account, Pastor Mark Dunford said that he had been dismissed from the church's Portland branch after calling for Driscoll's resignation, saying that the founder created a culture of fear inside the church. An August pro profile of Driscoll published by the New York Times explained that he had been accused of plagiarizing, of inappropriately using church funds, and of consolidating power to such a degree that it has become difficult for anyone to challenge or even question him. A month earlier, it was revealed that Driscoll had posted hundreds of inflammatory internet comments almost 15 years ago. A pastor using his religion as an abuse? Say it isn't so! I know, right? Oh. But then again, internet comments 15 years ago? Wow. Yeah, that's, that's actually kind of, kind of impressive. Yeah. He, he, he's, he's old school. He's stuck with it. Oh, yeah. Although the media focused on his comments about the U.S. being a pussified nation, bloggers who followed Driscoll closely argued that his views on women and sex were the larger problem. On Monday, Love Joe Feminism blogger Libby Ann pointed out one of the more disturbing notions from Driscoll's internet trolling days. Ultimately, God created you and it is his penis. You are simply borrowing it for a while, Driscoll wrote under the name of William Wallace II in 2001. Knowing that his penis would need a home, God created a woman to be your wife, and when you marry her and look down, you will notice that your wife is shaped differently than you and makes a very nice home. More vagina hacks. Yeah. Oh, oh, this next one. That fall, if you are single, you must remember that your penis is homeless and needs a home, he continued. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that is the greatest description of being single I've ever heard. Oh, my God. I can, I can see that being used as a lame pickup line. You, you sign up to a woman in the bar, like, hey, baby. My penis is homeless. You want to help it out? <laughs> oh, God. You want to give it shelter for the night? <laughs> <laughs> and it, gets, it gets even better, I think. But though you may believe your hand is shaped like a home, it is not. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know what? The hand may not be a home, but it is a temporary shack. There you go. It's like it's... a love motel. Yeah, there you go. It's a motel. 
That's pretty cool. <laughs> no, the sleeping bag's the condom. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's like when you roll yourself up into like a little human burrito with your blankets. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and no point in time with any of this conversation going to go well. No. <laughs> <laughs> Where is this? Does this guy live in that that city we were talking about before coming? <laughs> it might have been. Oh God. Oh. oh. If he does, he's not doing enough of it. No, obviously not. Just wow. Oh. And then the next line, and if you look at a man, it is quite obvious that what uh, what a homeless man does not need is another man without a home. But that's why you gotta <laughs> you gotta buddy up and share the body heat, man. There you that's go. how you stay alive in the winter. Exactly. <laughs> oh my God, this actually reminds me of of a film we saw. I think it was when I was in te- when I was going to school in Texas. And... Were you watching gay porn? No, but the Homer. teacher. No, 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 no. You can be honest with us. No. We're very open people. <laughs> we are open, and I am very open, but I am also honest. But no, what the teacher was showing, I don't remember exactly what ex- what, what the uh, film itself was, but uh, one guy had, like, you know, he'd fallen into, like, an icy river or something, and there were a couple of other guys around, and they needed to, you know, like, huddle up with him under a blanket. And the teacher told us, yeah, this guy is, these guys are just huddling up under him for warmth or anything. They're not doing anything inappropriate. And it's like, really? Did we really need that disclaimer? I mean, it's just – and I think it was to to uh, show a science lesson on how body heat works and, and frostbite and, and, and I want to say frostbite or something like that. At least I think it was a science class. It was years ago. but So basically the teacher showed the video and then went, no homo. No, she went no homo and then showed the video. Ah. So it's like a it, it's like a preemptive no homo. Weird. Such a stupid thing to say, no homo. Yeah, it is. It's it like, should only be said ironically. There you go. Uh. <laughs> and speaking of Texas, we actually we actually do have one more. We do have one more. Um, speaking of Texas. The wealthy father of a Texas teen whose affluenza defense helped him avoid prison after a deadly truck drunk driving incident has been arrested for allegedly pretending to be a police officer the <laughs> Dallas News reported. Oh, God. Oh, dumb people. Ethan Couch, 16, is infamous for plowing a car into a crowd at a high speed, killing four and injuring two, and then getting off with probation by arguing he suffered from affluenza, that his family's wealth stunted his emotional development and led to his behavior. Ethan's dad, Fred Couch, was arrested Tuesday morning because of a July incident where North Richland, North Richland Hills officers say they found him at the scene of a disturbance in the middle of the night, and he falsely claimed he was a cop from a nearby small town. The Dallas News explains he told officers he could prove it that he had his police stuff in his car. And sure enough, he reached into the car, took out his wallet, and showed the North Richland Hills officers what appeared to be a police badge and identification card, suggesting he was a police officer, says the release. At that point, he was allowed to go. Oh, it's okay. He's a cop. You can go on, sir. Yeah. The officers later checked on Couch's claims and found he had been lying. Couch is a millionaire industrialist and the owner of Cliburn Sheet Metal, but has never been a licensed Texas peace officer. He also has several previous arrests on charges, including theft and evading arrest. He is still, Ethan Couch is still serving 10 years probation, going to mandatory rehab that, despite the affluence that allegedly causes crimes, is paid for mostly by the state of Texas. Then that last line was specifically put in there by the article writer to piss everybody off. It worked. Yeah, because fuck So. What what really kind of pisses me off about this particular article, I mean, it's all bad, but the one that that bothers me the most is the fact that you had two supposedly trained law enforcement officers who were not able to recognize a fake police badge. Yeah, either fake or out of use, because, you know, remember, this guy's rich. He could have just said, hey, uh, you, know, you, you got any badges you don't use anymore? I'll give you money for it. Okay, Boom. Uh, and that's a whole other level of stupid there. Yeah, that is. Uh, and then, you know, if I was either one of these cops that, that saw this guy, number one, I would probably know from the news that this guy is the father of the affluenza teen who really needs to get his teeth kicked in. You know, the, the teen and also the father now. Yeah. And I would be like, wait a minute. Let me check right now. And check right there. 
have the other officer detain him and you know small talk or whatever you know and if mr mr affluenza father decided he wanted to get get all out of shape and bent out of shape and and everywhere then hey you know you you you, you have ways of dealing with that and then when it comes back not clean then you fucking arrest him for impersonating an officer right there, yeah. there. i mean to to the officer's credit they do eventually check but they should have checked right then and there they were a little yeah, late too, on that yeah too little too late yeah Oh, so with that, we are about out of time, and we are going to get out of here for this week. If we wanted to find uh, Steve on the social media, where can we find him? You can find me on Twitter, uh, at Steve the Wicked. That's Steve underscore the Wicked. Um, you can also find me on Tumblr at wickedsmile88.tumblr.com. And there's also a Facebook page for Judge of Character. By all means, go and like that right now. And, of course, as always, you can find me on YouTube at Wicked Small Productions. Sweet! And if we wanted to find Kat, where could we find her? Uh, you can find me on social media, at Twitter at LabyrinthCat and Facebook.com slash NerdistCat. You can find me on my, my other show, What the Fuck at 1201beyond.com. And you can also find me on my other other show, Nerd to the Third Power, over on the that guy with the glasses under the podcast tab. There you go. Wow, you you, you almost blinked out on yours. I've blinked out on mine too. Don't feel too bad. Too bad. <laughs> so often. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. And if you want to find me on social media, you can find me on Twitter and Tumblr at gomer 21 double X. You can find my stuff on rtgomer.com and nerdvice.com, both of which have their own Facebook pages. Go and like them and enjoy and subscribe and yada 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 yada. And if you like this show and you want to toss some money at it for production costs and everything else, uh, head over to patreon.com slash gomer 21 double X. Uh, even just a dollar per video would be a lot of help. Um, and if you're worried about going over your budget or whatever, you can actually set a cap so you don't go over whatever budget you have for the month. And, uh, and speaking of Patreon, I would be very remiss if I did not mention my beautiful and lovely girlfriend, Becky Hopkins, who also has her own Patreon, patreon.com slash Becky Hop. She is responsible for some of the artwork that you're seeing pop up on the site now, uh, especially with some of my more recent Gomer Plays videos. That's her artwork there. And she's actually working on a new one for this show and also on the Port Charlie podcast as well. So we'll be seeing those. And I believe Becky did a couple of things for your, for your show, didn't she? Steve? Uh, yes, actually, she did a thumbnail for the episode I did on Vigo versus Gozer, who which was the uh, who was the better Ghostbusters villain, and she also did the uh, new uh, end title image for my uh, show. So if you watch my show and you get to the end of the episode, that little bit of animation that shows the Wicked Smile logo, which is also on my YouTube page. Um, that's her work. Yes. And if you throw enough money at her on her uh, Patreon page, she will do for you, for your faces, a 30 second animation. It's really good. She's an award winning animator, even. 30 seconds. Awesome. 30 seconds of animation, award winning animator. Yeah, I would do that. Oh, so go check her out again. Patreon.com slash Becky Hop. And with that, we are going to get out of here. Thank you guys for listening. And until next time, this is Gomer, the Ranting Thespian, with The Cat and Steve McCool, signing off. Thespian Talk is an R.T. Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.